Hi. I really, really, really didn't want to have to post this post, but then I thought, I think it's going to have to be something I talk about, and I need to um, work it out with everybody. Because I think I have something that I can share about my specific foray into this topic, and I'm hoping it'll help. Um, we're going to talk about rejection. Rejection is super fun. Rejection is something that um, writers have to deal with constantly. And when I started marketing um, Bottled, rejection was so common for me at that point that it didn't really bother me that much. In fact, most of the time when I asked for help with marketing or something in terms of my book, I was so clueless in what I was doing that when I would get the no, it was sort of like, I wasn't surprised. However, second books are tough because second books are when you supposedly know a little bit more about what you're doing. And for me and my tender ego, the rejection that I have received with um, Perfect has been um, tougher because my ego is a little bit bigger. Second book syndrome can be killer that way. Um, but mainly the rejection I want to talk about is not so much when you're just sending something out to the masses and you're asking for the masses to answer you back. I don't mind that kind of rejection. I get it all the time. I send out emails and queries, and I and I and well, okay, I'm not. I've got to be honest. I do mind a little bit. I mean, it stings to get the email back, dear sir or madam. We're not interested in your work. Go away. <laughs> I mean, that's not fun, but it's not shocking. However, what does hurt or sting is that when you are offering yourself forward to people that you've known and worked with, and they're not responding to your help or requests, um, which is tough anyhow to do, that can really hurt. And so I think the thing that I would <clears throat> liken it to or, or like try to comment upon is, you know, when you've been rejected by someone you care about, that hurts much, much more than if you go up to the, you know, anyone and ask them for something and they say no. I mean, if you're trying to ask someone out on a first date, but you don't really know her or him very well, and she says no, I mean, it'll sting. But if this is someone that you've known and worked with for ages, and then if you have a real working relationship with, and they say no, oh, it really, really stings, and it really, really hurts. And so what I wanted to offer for my two cents was not how to deal with rejection, because it's going to happen all the time, but... It's, we, we need to understand that rejection is a part of life. You know, people will say, I'm going to take these off. People will say, uh, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Well, yes, true. Rejection does make you stronger. You should not avoid it altogether. You should put yourself out there. You should go for the gusto. You should always keep trying. And you're right. These, these incidences where people say no to you, they are an opportunity for learning. That's what my husband always says, the engineer. It's an opportunity for, lear for learning, right? I sort of secretly hate him when he says stuff like that. Anyhow, um, but what I want <clears throat> to talk about a little bit is just how do you deal with the pain of it? In the meantime, when you're trying to get the learning done, when you're trying to do the right thing and dust yourself up and pick yourself up and move on with your life because that's the healthy thing to do, in the meantime, how do you just get through the hurt? What do you do with all that pain? Okay? And so what I just wanted to offer to you was a suggestion that's just twofold, and it's really worked for me in these past weeks. Um, the first suggestion is I like to cry and kind of wad myself up into the fetal position and rock. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Okay. So um, first of all, I have my whoopee on today, my comfort scarf, because I'm getting a cold. And um, we're talking about rejection, so why not, you know, provide yourself a barrier between you and the world. That's a good place to start. Um, it's also important to surround yourself with animals. I have a dog here. There's a cat right here. I'm not going to pick him up because he'll steal the show. And the rest of the video will just be about Steve. Okay, so the first thing that I do is two-step system. When rejected by someone, I have to agree that the, the step one, I have to agree that there is something to be learned from it. And um, most of the time when you hear, you know, when someone rejects you and you go and you try to talk to somebody about it, they'll say, well, that's on them. That's on them. That has to do with them and their life. We don't know what's going on in their life. You're right. True. But there should be something in it, some nugget, some little tiny kernel that you have to just agree 
there might be something here that I should investigate further. Why did they say no? There's something I need to look at. However, you don't have to do anything with that. You just have to agree to investigate it further down the road. In other words, it's a pride thing. When we get rejected, we are so immediately stuck with this. How could they? It's me. I, you know, I'm lovable and wonderful. No, the, <laughs> there's something there. And we need to be willing to address it. But we don't have to address it right now. We just have to be willing to address it and say, I will address it when the time is right. Now is not the time because I'm hurting. And so the next thing that I do, step two, is I take that person that hurt me and I vow to pray for them for 10 days straight. And I want to pray on them blessings of every accord, everything wonderful that I can think of that would really be fruitful and wonderful for them, for their business, for their writing, for their conference that they won't let me come speak at, for their, just for anything. I pray for that and I pray for them. It makes me sound really selfless and wonderful, doesn't it? No. Uh, but you know what it does? is It takes the focus off of you. It takes the focus off of your hurting heart. And I don't know what happens. It could be that this God thing is real. Maybe. Yeah. And that he actually does some healing in those 10 days. Um, there's some miraculous shift that happens every darn time I do this, if I can remember to do it. Um, because usually when I'm rejected, I'm so ticked off and sad that, that praying for this person, like literally taking it seriously enough to write it down in my planner, pray for so-and-so, it's hard to do that. So make a resolve. The next time you're feeling hurt and rejected by someone that you know and love, one, be willing to accept that there might be some truth in it and say, I will address that further down the road. When God, in God's planning and in God's time, it will come to me when I need to learn, what I need to learn from this. That takes the pressure off of you for feeling like you have to be perfect at all times anyhow. And two, I'm gonna pray for that person now. And, and I'm gonna do it for 10 days straight. And shazam, if you don't feel better in 10 days, I'm serious, this is one of those times where I'm able to say, if you follow this two-step program, it will change your life because I really do feel like it does. It's a life-changing exercise. It's not all about us. And rejection hurts, but there's a plan in place that can help you with it. That's my two cents for today. Everyone carry on. I'm going to wrap myself up in my scarf and go get some hot tea and, uh, and, and try to continue my day. <laughs> carry on.